our thesis in Make War's history is that ending Britain's involvement in war is a realistic possibility, provided we act together to tackle the systemic, legal, financial, political, and educational problems and causes of the problem. We're currently involved in two illegal wars, and in the past six years, we've murdered somewhere between 250,000 and 1.2 million people, and the best estimates that we have is that is around 1 million people have died violently in Iraq and Afghanistan as a result of the illegal invasions and occupations of their countries. We have injured and maimed 2.5 million people in the same period of time, and we have driven 4 million into exile and destitution, both within their country and outside of Iraq. I believe this to be the worst atrocity in British history. I cannot think of another time in the last thousand years where we have deliberately and intentionally gone out and murdered 300,000 children. It's just quite unbelievable. Now, if you divide 300,000 into 2,100 days, something like that, that's an awful lot of children every day, roughly one every 10 minutes we are murdering. There are numerous laws which have been broken. The first one is the Treaty for the Renunciation of War. It is the single most important treaty this country and the rest of the world has ever signed. It's called the Kellogg-Brien Pact, and it is important in law because in 1946, at the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials, it formed the basis of the charges against the Germany's leaders, and they were convicted, and several of them were hanged, in 1946 for breaches of the Kellogg-Brien Pact for invading and occupying 11 independent states in violation of the Kellogg-Brien Pact. That's why Germany's leaders were convicted and hanged. And that's precisely the same crime that our leaders and George Bush and Cheney and all the Americans and the coalition leaders, the same crime that they committed when they walked into Iraq. Now, the second main law that uh, holds this world together is the UN Charter. And in it, we promise faithfully never to threaten or attack another nation state. That is Article 2, 3, and 2, 4 in the Charter. After the UN Charter is the Nuremberg Judgment. Now, that was the most important customary international law. It still is the most important customary international law relating to war. In 1948, we signed the Genocide Convention, and we agreed that we would never kill, set out to destroy members of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, in whole or in part. And what we've done by attacking Iraq is kill Iraqis for the sole reason that they are living in Iraq. That is setting out to destroy members of a national group. It is, in law, an act of genocide. In 1948, we also had another version of the Geneva Conventions. And the important thing about the 1948 Geneva Convention is that it protected civilians for the first time. Since then, we have been attacking civilians more and more. And our government has attacked Iraq, and the numbers of deaths in Iraq is well over 90% civilians. Probably the most important war law that has ever been agreed was the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. In 1998, this was signed by 132 nations, and it came into force on July the 1st, 2002, when the 60th state had ratified the convention. Now, ratification means bringing, bringing an international law into your domestic national legal legislation. And uh, Britain actually ratified this on September the 1st, 2001. It became law in England and Wales. And on September the 8th, it became law in Scotland. And what it does is it introduces into Britain six crimes. The crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, 
war crimes, and importantly, conduct ancillary to genocide, conduct ancillary to a war crime, and conduct ancillary to a crime against humanity. It is the single most important, tightly defined war law that we have in England and Wales. And under it, we should be able to charge, prosecute, and convict all our leaders. In 1950, the United Nations signed and ratified the work of the International Law Commission to devise seven universal war laws. And these are the most important laws universal to the whole world, because for the first time it makes everybody responsible for the acts of their government. And that includes you and me, as well as our leaders. And so now in law, anyone who is complicit in a war of aggression, which is the seventh Nuremberg principle, is liable for an international crime, and is criminally liable for punishment. There's 33 important separate criminal offenses, and it is important if you're going to try and bring a prosecution against people to have a look through those and identify precisely which ones have been broken. One of the important ones relates to the pillage of Iraqi resources. Again, I've just, I have mentioned uh, conduct ancillary to genocide. Now, that's very important because um, conduct ancillary is a very wide term. Basically, it means aiding and abetting or assisting in the crime of genocide. And in the Rome Statute, they have specified that very clearly, including in section 25.3c, where they say, including providing the means for the commission of the crime. Now that's very clear. That means providing the money, the materials, the troops, the supplies, anything that will facilitate the commission of the crime. Now thinking about that, if our government has committed genocide, then every taxpayer who has paid tax in the last six years has committed an offence of conduct ancillary to genocide. Now, one of the most effective ways of bringing an end to what's going on is to stop the flow of money. If the government has no money to pay the troops or to buy the weapons or to get the supplies, war will stop within a week. And it is the single most effective thing we can do as a nation is to stop the money. A lot of people seem to be scared of this. And I keep saying, well, look, hang on. You've got the law on your side. It is a criminal offense of conduct ancillary to genocide if you hand over your taxes to the government. So don't. Don't commit any criminal offenses. So you have the law on your side. Even if you are a pensioner, your pension provider will be taking some money out of your account and sending it to the government as taxes. Your bank will be taking any, uh, a percentage of your interest earned as tax and paying it to the government. Every time you go in for a cup of coffee, the VAT goes to the government. Every time you pay a parking charge, that is a criminal offense of conduct ancillary to genocide under the International Criminal Court Act. I get into a lot of trouble when I say that the Queen is one of the worst war criminals we've ever had in this country. And I will say it again. What I'm concerned about is that she is the person who signs the orders. Our troops never go overseas, never attack or use weapons, unless they are ordered to do so by the queen or the monarch. What we need to also look at is who qualifies as a criminal, a war criminal, who is responsible for the killing of a million Iraqi citizens, including 300,000 children. Now, broadly, obviously, it's those people who lead the attack, who plan it, who organize it, and that falls fairly and squarely on the shoulders of Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, Jack Straw, Jeff Hoon, John Prescott, Lord Goldsmith. We must, must stop what is going on and get these guys into court so they can answer for what they've done before a, a jury.